interest rates affect everybody. From a housing perspective, when rates go up, it means it's more expensive to borrow money and therefore Canadians will be able to afford less, if at all. And when rates go down, it means it's cheaper to borrow money, meaning more Canadians will be able to buy properties, flood the market and potentially increase property prices. Even renters are affected by interest rates. I get asked all the time, are rates gonna go up? Are rates gonna stay the same? Are they gonna go down? What's going on? How do we know? The message is interest rates are gonna be low for an extended period. So how does the Bank of Canada actually set interest rates? Let's find out. The Bank of Canada looks at four main things before deciding what to do with interest rates. The first of which is inflation. Ah, inflation, a pretty popular word over the last few years. Now, the Bank of Canada has a mandate to keep inflation low and predictable at 2%, and they set the overnight interest rates to achieve that target. But how is inflation actually calculated in this country? That's a very important question if the Bank of Canada is gonna set monetary policy based on this variable, right? Well, Statistic Canada publishes the consumer price index and inflation numbers on a monthly basis. Now, how do they get that data? Well, Statistics Canada surveys Canadians, thousands of households across the country for a basket of goods and services. And inside this basket, you have things like food, housing, education, recreation, things like that. And they use that as a proxy to gauge whether prices are going up or down. They also do price collection for the items in the goods and services basket from retailers and online retailers. They also weigh that basket based on importance to Canadians and consumers. So for example, housing and food might weigh more than recreation and education, for example. Now this begs the question of accuracy. How accurate is that inflation number? Because first of all, they've surveyed thousands of Canadians, but I've never got a call from Stats Canada. So, you know, where is this data coming from? Who is getting surveyed? What goods are going into this basket? And who determines the weight of said goods, right? Like I might value food more than someone else. Someone else might value recreation more than me. So how is that basket determined? It's obviously not a perfect metric. Now, with that being said, it is quite difficult to determine the inflation of items because think about it, you have so many different data points, different retailers, different items, and you have to come up with a report if you're Stats Canada every week, every month. So I get it, there's no perfect science to be able to determine that data because why would retailers or individuals wanna share data with the government? So that makes sense. It's not a perfect system, like I said, um, but if they use the same method year over year, month over month, at least we have some consistency in the not so perfect way that they calculate this basket of goods and services. So not perfect, but it is what it is. And at least we're able to get a data point based on the aforementioned way of calculating inflation. The second thing that the Bank of Canada looks at is economic factors. Things such as unemployment rate, GDP, GDP per capita, business spending, things like that. And similar to my point on inflation, well, take those numbers such as unemployment with a grain of salt because there's no way that you can actually get a perfect and precise number. Again, it is a best estimate. The third thing that the Bank of Canada looks at are external factors. They might be looking at what the Fed is doing with their interest rates. They might be looking at geopolitical factors. They might be looking at trade between different countries. The fourth thing they're gonna be looking at is financial stability. So currently in 2024, what that means is if they jack up interest rates way too much, it means way too many Canadians are gonna default on their mortgages and there's gonna be blood on the streets. So they take that into consideration, which is why recently I think they've halted the interest rates, because that's probably gonna happen. A lot of Canadians got mortgages during the COVID era where interest rates were extremely low. So those are the four main metrics that the Bank of Canada looks at when deciding interest rates. And you might be thinking, 
those factors are quite subjective and qualitative because, for example, the external factors, they look at geopolitical factors. Are they just watching the news? Like, and also with metrics such as unemployment or inflation, there's no absolute truth in those numbers. You have to take it with a grain of salt. So ultimately, the decision is quite subjective. And everybody has different incentives, right? I'll give you an example. If I'm a homeowner and I have a 25 year amortization on a mortgage on my home, I would prefer a lower interest rate, which means I'm paying less to service my mortgage. On the flip side, if I'm a bank, I might prefer higher interest rates because a loan for me as a bank is actually an asset because people have to pay interest to me. So I would prefer higher interest rates. You see how there is sort of a conflict of interest between people within this country? Different people want different things for the interest rate number. Now, if everybody has a different incentive, some people want to go up, some people want to go down, who ultimately is in charge of deciding what to do with interest rates at the Bank of Canada? Well, the answer is actually we, the people. Specifically, the Bank of Canada's interest rate and monetary decisions are made by the Governing Council. The Governing Council consists of the Governor at the Bank of Canada, the Senior Deputy Governor, and four Deputy Governors. And why are decisions made by Canadians? Well, the Minister of Finance recommends to the Prime Minister and their Cabinet people who should be appointed to those positions. So ultimately, it is the Prime Minister and the Minister of Finance who elect these people. So indirectly, Canadians elect a Prime Minister. That Prime Minister appoints a Minister of Finance and its cabinet. The Minister of Finance recommends people that should hold positions in the Governing Council, which elects monetary policy. And ultimately, the Prime Minister gives the green light or not to appoint those people that the Minister of Finance recommends. So that's how things are supposed to work. It's a bit complicated, but when I was doing my research, ChatGPT at the end of every answer reiterated, the Bank of Canada operates independently within its mandate to promote the economic and financial welfare of Canada. So to wrap things up, the Governing Council meets eight times a year. Here's the schedule for 2024. I'm shooting this on March 5th, so the next interest rate announcement will be tomorrow. You'll probably know what they've done by the time you've seen this video. I don't know what they're gonna do, probably hold it steady, but we'll see. And here's what they've done in the past couple of years with interest rates as well. Roughly speaking, it takes about 18 months for the actual economy to be affected by the pulling of the lever of interest rates. So that's why they meet up so frequently um, because it really is a delicate, delicate game that they're playing. So that's how interest rates are set in Canada from a very, very high level. I don't want to go into more detail. I don't want to bore you, but from a very high level, that's essentially how things work. Now you might understand why there's so much speculation before meetings because at the end of the day, no one is really 100% certain what they're gonna do with interest rates, right? Because the variables that they're looking at are quite subjective. So their decision is gonna be partly subjective. So it's important to keep up to date and be well informed so that you can make the best decision possible moving forward. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Also, while I was doing research for this video, I realized that the salary for the governor of Bank of Canada is like 550K. It's more than the prime minister. So if you guys are watching this, uh, are you guys hiring?